Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are chatting to Manana Ibrahim Bam, the Secretary General of the Jamiat al Ulama of South Africa. And the question that Manana people ask is that why do Muslims hurry in burying their deceased? Sometimes hours within the demise of the person, whereas you find that there are customs in other communities that takes up to a week before they can even get started with the funeral procession. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone. Yes, I think it's uh, an important question and it has come to the fore because of some uh, high profile uh, funerals that have taken place and people have asked the question, why did we bury so uh, early? And that has always been part and parcel of our teachings. And amongst the reasons, one of the greatest reason is there is a prophetic instruction. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, had said that uh, do not delay in three things. And amongst the three things that he had said do not delay is when a person has passed on and the disease is ready, then do not delay in the burial. The other one is do not delay in the, in the prayer when the time of the prayer approaches. And the third was when um, a young person is ready for marriage, then do not delay in the marriage unnecessarily. So these are the, firstly is a prophetic instruction. Then there are many other reasons that are tied to it. I think the main reason is it's a prophetic instruction and it is a command of our religion. The second is we do not believe death to be the end of our existence. Mm. So then death is not the end of existence. We believe death to be part of a process, part of a continued journey. The journey doesn't end with death. It is like someone who is moving on from death to the next phase of existence. Some ulama and some scholars have given this example uh, that death is like going from one phase of existence, one room to another room. And um, when you are in transit, which we believe death to be, uh, or we believe this particular process to be, uh, anyone who is in transit doesn't want to wait too long in transit. He wants to move on to his ultimate journey. So in this particular way, we look at this whole process of the burial as part of the journey. So it is part of the continual journey. So when you, when you are now in one phase and you are going in the journey, you would like to go towards the, the ultimate destination. So another reason amongst other reasons why we do not de we do, we do, we do it as soon as possible is because we would like to continue the journey and it must reach its ultimate destination. And there are uh, sayings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which gives indication towards that. When a person passes away, bury him as soon as possible so he can go to his ultimate destination. The third reason is, uh, and this of course is a psychological reason, it might not necessarily be tied to a religious instruction, is that uh, there is no doubt that the presence of a deceased in the midst of people who are near and dear uh, to him might sometimes be difficult because they remember a person in a particular way, that he was jovial, he was laughing, he was full of life. And then to see a person uh, in such a situation uh, as a lifeless corpse, cannot do anything, sometimes uh, might be difficult upon people. And it can also lead to a situation of a certain degree of, um, you know, a certain degree of apprehension towards the, the, the disease in the body, etc. And we believe that uh, it brings quicker closure to a person uh, after the passing of a near and dear one when the person is buried. And in that particular way, there is a quicker closure for the near and dear ones, for the beloveds, uh, than instead of him being still part for another week or for many couple of days after that. So you mean you should bury as soon as possible? Yes. Sometimes the question arises, what if somebody is far away, a close relative that wants to attend the funeral? Can you delay it for two days, three days, four days? What is the instruction? There? Well, it's not, it's not preferred. There are situations where if, for example, the, the, the closest relative, the guardian, the guardian is at another place and he, he asks for permission to allow him to come. But again, it is within reasonable limits. Maybe it's a couple of hours, someone is here in Johannesburg and someone is in Durban, say, allow me to come from Durban. There is accommodation. But to wait for a couple of days, three, four, five days, waiting for someone to get a visa before he comes, uh, that is not preferred in our religion and that's not the normal custom and practice within our religion. 
The other question that people ask is that, why do you bury? Why is this particular method adopted? Well, we do believe that that is uh, uh, the best of ways uh, to dispose of the body. And it's a very interesting anecdote in the Holy Quran when the first uh, death took place. And of course, it took place in tragic circumstances because one of the sons of Adam, uh, Habil and Qabil, one of them killed the other person and murdered the other person. So after, you know, he has completed the murder and he was sitting now worried, how am I going to dispose of this body? So he saw a bird, uh, that there was another bird that had died in front of that bird and uh, it started t taking the, the soil and putting that bird into the earth. And he said, you know, what is wrong with me that I cannot do what the bird has done? So in, a, in an amazing way, uh, there was this first body that was disposed of in, in the history of humanity happened by us taking a lead from an animal. Uh, and one of the sons of Adam alayhi salatu was salam, who after completing the murder of his brother, saw a bird doing this and he felt that that is a good way to dispose of the body. And there are other benefits with regard to it. The Quran, for example, says, مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى from soil where you created, from, to soil will you be returned, and from so soil will you be resurrected. There is no better a metaphor and no better understanding of life that you were, your, your origin was from soil, was from the sand, you return to the sand, and you are resurrected from the sand. And very interestingly, that when we throw the few sandfuls of uh, sand into the grave, uh, it is recommended that we read this prayer from from soil and from dust you were created from dust is your return and from dust will you be re your res uh, resurrection so we believe that that is uh, a very interesting uh, analysis of humans life you came from soil and you are returned to soil subhanallah uh, people are impressed at the simplicity of our procession uh, talk us through the, the, the basic procedure of uh, how the person is bathed and then deposited into the ground. People are impressed by the simplicity of all of this. You know what, what is amazing is that uh, I, I did uh, a few interviews on, on, on the media with regard to it and there's been many questions with regard to it. People have found it to be quite interesting uh, and, and this is also because of the high cost of burial in other communities and societies. So they have to pay on a monthly basis to have a very expensive casket or very expensive coffin, etc. Now, when you look at our particular method of burial, the amazing thing is that there is no great formalities. There is no great expense other than the expenses of the municipality, which, of course, no one can get away with. But uh, with the ease and expenses of the burial or the, the, the grave site, etc. But in terms of the actual formalities, it's a very, very simple process. We, after a person has passed away, we bathe him in a particular way. It's done with a great amount of dignity. And it is recommended that the near and dear ones be part and parcel of that. Uh, they are the ones who bathe the deceased. Someone who is close to them. He has been with you throughout your life. What a beautiful way of being part of the sending off. That you bathe him in a particular way. You wash him. You know, you wash him with uh, soap and you wash him with camphor and camphor is used to preserve to some extent the body and thereafter you put him in three pieces of cloth or five pieces of cloth, three for the male, five for the female and in this way, whether it be a king, whether it be a pauper, whether it be a poor person, whether it be a wealthy person, everyone goes with three or five pieces of calico white cloth. It's not as if you're going to wear a branded type of shroud. No, there's no bread. It's only a pure calico white piece of shroud that you cover the disease. So after the disease is bathed, you cover them and you shroud them in that particular white piece of cloth. And you cover it. And after the covering takes place, it is one particular type of covering for, for every person within the, the community. And we have seen even, you know, uh, recently there has been people who have passed on in, 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 uh, uh, in the kingdoms in the Gulf uh, states. 
where the king had passed away. And you saw that even that particular, what, no matter how they lived, there's a different matter. But in terms of the, 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 the deceased, they followed all the same procedure. They went with three pieces of cloth, uh, they were buried in an unmarked grave, and the procedure is the same. So there's a great amount of simplicity in our sending off. It's three pieces of white piece of cloth, irrespective of who the person is. After the bathing and after the shrouding, uh, we do a prayer. And in that prayer, we, there's three units. And in the units, we firstly, we praise the Almighty. Then we send salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, and other prophets. And we also then pray for the forgiveness of the deceased and for the people who are alive. And thereafter, after the prayer is done, then uh, the people who are closest to the deceased will carry the body into the grave. And in the grave, we will find that um, we, we create a niche. And the niche is in the direction of Makkah. That is for uniformity and also to show our submission to the Almighty. All right. Almighty is everywhere, but uh, for the sake of uniformity. Can we imagine if it is left open to people? Someone will say, I would like to be uh, buried in the direction of my uh, place where I was born. And someone will say, Pakistan, India, Africa, wherever it is, North Africa. So there is uniformity and there is also submission. Because uh, the symbol of the Almighty, the greatest symbol of the Almighty, for us as believers, is the Baytullah, the house of the Almighty. So we turn the, the body in the direction of Mecca. And after putting the, the body in a niche, then we place a small um, a barrier. So there will be uh, wooden planks that would be from the niche, wooden planks placed in such a manner that creates a barrier between the deceased body and the sand that will fill the grave. Mm. And after the planks are placed and there is a barrier, and that it has been sort of sealed in such a way that when the sand falls upon the grave, it doesn't pierce or doesn't go through the barrier. Uh, and then afterwards, the community together will thereafter fill the grave. And in that is a recommended procedure that the people of the community take part and they themselves fill the sand of the, the grave. Uh, and as I said before, uh, when we first, the first handful of sand that we put we read that verse, Min from soil and dust were you created, and from soil and dust you are going, you are being returned, and from here you will be resurrected on the day of accountability. So there you have it, the simplicity in the procedure. You bathe the person, you clothe him in three pieces of cloth, you deposit him in the grave with no casket, no coffin, and this is the procedure for the king, the poor, or the average person, and this is the simplicity that Islam uh, impresses upon its followers. Uh, may the Almighty show us with His mercy and keep us under His watchful eye. Amen.